to gather here for the inauguration of Karnapa Memorial Hospital. We are especially honored to have two highly esteemed guests with us today, Dr. H.V. Ande and Dr. Maman Chandi, to start this remarkable journey with us. Now, a little bit of brief intro on both of them. Dr. Maman Chandi is the former director of Tata Medical Center, Kolkata. He was personally invited by Mr. Radhan Tata to build Tata Medical Center. It was amazing exercise. He is an alumnus of Nation. Thank you for having called me to the inaugural of this center. Dr. Hande, other dignitaries on the dais, Margaret, whom I know from many years, and many people in the audience whom I haven't seen for years. Dr. John Solomon sitting there. I have known him years ago when he was practicing and he still is, I'm sure. So uh, I'm very happy today to be here at the inaugural of this hematology center. Uh, when I finished my MD in internal medicine in I, I finished in 1979. There was no hematology training in India. There was no hematology training. So one of my juniors got me a position with a person called Philip Majerus in Washington University School of Medicine. And the US Embassy in Chennai refused to give me a visa. So I couldn't go to the US. So I went to Australia. And I tell you that was a good thing. Why was it a good thing? Because I understood hematology 360 degrees. I had to do blood banking, things which I wasn't interested in, but I had to do it. And that means you become rounded in your knowledge of the subject. And the training in Australia was superb. So after training, I came back in 1983 and started a unit. At that time, there was no concept of a clinical hematology department in a hospital. So I was allotted one intern. I had a small room which was eight feet by four feet. That was the department of hematology. And this young lady doctor, lost about six kilograms of weight in one month. And I said, what are you doing to her? So the work was so hard, and that was the beginning. Subsequently, we started the first DM hematology program in this country. So we were inspected by somebody from Delhi who said we were not fit to start. So the director of medical education gave me a few minutes went to Delhi, he listened to me. And he's on the dais, on in front. Good evening to all of you. It's a prize and privilege to be among you all in this glorious evening, among this function. Say, 40 years back, when the laboratory science was an ordinary ancillary facility of Kilnesian, the one, one among the few architects of this laboratory, St. Dr. S.B. Ganesan, made this as a primary field for our all clinicians. Now, he is into the field of hematology, hematopathology and hemato-oncology. Our ultimate vision is to reach the highest level of scientific advantage in this field and we know we will reach it earliest. Our ultimately, our mission is to oil this facility, this unreachable facility to all of you in our country that will also we will achieve soon and I request all of you to join with us to achieve our goal. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. He is a product of the CMC Velour Dr. Padmasri, Dr. Chandi and uh, Ganeshan's uh, son Sendil is also there. We have distinguished persons on the days and uh, several distinguished persons here of the days, many of whom I met before starting the commencement of this meeting. Uh, Dr. Ganeshan <coughs> is a man with a lot of ideas. 
there are two things uh, in this field of uh, medical field. One is uh, being a very efficient, as he rightly said, the the acumen to for uh, sharp diagnosis. Dr. Chandy has stressed that is one thing. A good uh, physician, a good surgeon, a good doctor uh, who knows what to do, when to do, and all these things is one thing. And uh, the other thing is the management. Management of an institution is not an ordinary thing. This is where uh, Shandil has to play a role in the matter of management. Here we have uh, Kannapura Memorial Hospital Hematology and uh, Cell Therapy and uh, I, I understand we also uh, a separate uh, room for uh, hemodialysis. Am I right, uh, Doctor? Yes. Huh? Am I right? Yeah. Hemodialysis. So, chronic uh, renal replacement. Continuous so, investment therapy. Because I, I am very much uh, uh, conversant with this problem of hemodialysis because dialysis, because uh, I had to monitor the transshipment of uh, a very precious uh, patient in 1984, namely Parakshita or MGR from, from Apollo Hospital. They got panicky there. They wanted him to be removed and taken. And then uh, we had to do a lot of things. There are a lot of problems. The dialysis is also there. The peritoneal dialysis, hemodialysis, all these things. I do not want to go into that because it will become political. But the point is, <coughs> one suggestion I would like to make to Dr. Ganeshan. See, there are many patients today who are attending uh, uh, nursing homes, hospitals uh, one level lower than this and uh, such patients may require dialysis, hemodialysis. And then after hemodialysis they can go back to that uh, old hospital. So if you can plan, I am giving you a suggestion, I am sure uh, if you accept the suggestion it will be very rewarding also. What you can do is uh, at a very nominal price rate. Whoever wants to have dialysis, come have dialysis and then go back to your hospital. Let me think about it, how to plan it, uh, in, I mean, without hassles, all those things work. I'm only giving just uh, marginal on uh, the bare uh, outlines. That is what uh, you can do. The other thing, many of us uh, have not yet realized that uh, the what we know usually call the elephant in the room. We have three problems. See, see this particular generation you take and take about 100 years ago, the percentage of persons suffering from diabetes 100 years ago and the percentage of persons suffering from diabetes today. You'd be surprised and un I mean very much uh, uh, unhappy to know that India has become the world capital of diabetes. Why? What, what has gone wrong with India? Then again, it is about the heart patients. Uh, heart patients, uh, the, uh, the number of people who, who uh, lose their lives at a very early age, they have calculated, uh, yes, they have I read in a particular newspaper or some magazine, that uh, in one decade, the average age of persons who are going to have this uh, heart uh, <coughs> operations has come down by 10 years, the average. If it was 50 years last decade, it has come to 40 years, something like that. One decade, one ten years. So, what are the causative factors of that? This is one thing. Uh, this, uh, uh, so I have get talked to you about diabetes, about uh, heart attack, and then the uh, malignancy, the for which uh, to tackle which this hospital is primarily meant to, to tackle the problem malignancy, 
that is cancer or different varieties i am not going into i am not a technical the experts are here so i am just a general practitioner but the point is here also you have a role to play dr ganesh has a role to play why i am depending on ganesh is don't underestimate him many of you here because he is modestly sitting don't underestimate him he is a fantastic person on uh, october 6th i had an elevation politically mgr suddenly decided not only chief minister i i am decided to become the general secretary of the party nidanjadian war and bilap everybody top people are sitting i didn't want him to spot me i asked, then he called me i have decided to have dr hande as my deputy general secretary he said that was uh, 6th october uh, uh 1986 on that day we st- he started i i went and inaugurated his high tech <laughs> he was uh, very it, the man such ideas within a very short time it was like a banyan tree the high tech all over india in not only in tamil nadu in, in karnataka in so many places in fact when for one of my book release in bangalore at that time a chief uh, chief minister edirappa was there in sadananda garda the chief minister edirappa the for that function also yeah. i had the privilege of having him for that function also what i am trying to tell you is what he should do in my humble opinion is prepare a sort of a booklet brochure how to guard oneself against these three enemies we have lot of enemies pakistan is one enemy china is another enemy so many enemies but of all these enemies <coughs> the biggest enemies are these three diabetes and uh, malignancy and heart attack so how to prevent uh, what are the steps you can take to minimize the number of uh, de- patients suffering from these things you can prepare a booklet on behalf of this uh, uh, kanapa memorial hospital you can prepare a booklet and then issue it free whoever comes here for treatment you want booklet that will tell them by doing this we are reducing our own patients economically it is not advantageous for us but we are doing a social service that's the point i'm happy than giving a vote of thanks to such great dignitaries in the medical field the two giants here dr hande this is just a, not a coincidence that's a, i think it's a celestial coincidence that it was also a monday in 1986 october 6 dr honorable hande who was the health minister at the time in the mgr ministry inaugurated our high tech nurse center it was another monday today almost 40 years back we have the same great person inaugurating this hospital <laughs> thank you irmesh sir for being my guiding light for the past 40 years thank you so much and to the medical community particularly the hematology oncology hematology and oncology community Dr. Maman Chandi needs no introduction. He has been a pioneer, as has been explained. He did, uh, started the first department of hematology, first DM course, first BMT and what not. I mean, imagine a person of the caliber of Ratan Tata, personally invited sir to set up the Tata Medical Center in Calcutta. and i have met him on a few occasions despite the heights he has achieved in medicine and other things he is such a humble man it's very very difficult to see such a humility in such great persons i think that's why they are really great and when i requested him though he is in melur he happily accepted to be here and in fact he was here almost 30 minutes earlier than all other guests. <laughs> that 
actually gave me an excellent opportunity to interact with him and I was really not really, I need not be surprised. His knowledge is so sharp that he can talk today of many mutations which even younger hematologists are yet to study are probably not mastered it. I think my team will agree that. <laughs> so as he said, you know, the precision medicine using genomics and target therapy is going to change. And that's the vision of Kanapa Medical, Kanapa Hospital, Kanapa Normal Hospital. It is not that we are going to stop with the hematology and bone marrow transplants. We are also going to look at how bone marrow transplant outcomes can be improved by bringing in therapies like uh, T-cell depletion and also the abandoned extracorporeal photophoresis and also bring in some new technology. Our ultimate idea is to start CAR cell therapy here. Initially by buying it from some other vendors and ultimately by making our own CAR here. And I thank my team of doctors including Dr. Margaret, Dr. Dharni, Dr. Meena, Dr. Steve, Dr. Panditurai, Dr. Chandralekha and so many others. In fact, Dr. Julius, though he is not in our team, he is guiding me. And there are so many of my other friends who have guided me through the entire project. So I thank all of them. Then I thank all the doctors, my friends, relatives who have been with me for many decades who have come here to bless me on this occasion. Thank you all.